everybody, Deathbed here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ. My hair is starting to get shaggy, so I popped this hat on because it looks really bad. And I am recording this video right in the middle of the whole coronavirus COVID-19 lockdown. For me, as I mentioned in my little update video recently, life is pretty much the same because I work from home, except that now my son, Baby Deathblade, who's four, is uh, in the house 24-7, and now it's been weeks, and he is just, you know, going crazy. So if it's kind of loud in the background, or who knows, he might even barge in at some point, apologize in advance. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I think most of you who have read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels are probably very familiar with and don't need much of an explanation, and that's Spirit Stones. Uh, but what I'm going to do is going to compile sort of my understanding and the things that I've experienced uh, that typify what Spirit Stones are. Uh, if you're a fan of the novels, I'm curious to know if my assessment might be different from the uh, way that some other authors use Spirit Stones compared to the authors that I translate. Have you seen it used differently in other novels? Or I know these things appear in games, in movies, in uh, comic adaptations and whatnot. So I look forward to seeing your opinions in the comments below about the subject. So what are Spirit Stones in Chinese? It combines the word spirit, uh, or sometimes that word is uh, translated as spiritual. The same as from spiritual energy. I actually stopped translating that term as spiritual energy a while back and I use spirit energy. The reason is because I feel like there's a different connotation to spiritual. It would be weird to have spiritual stones. So I think spirit is better in general. So spirit stones are the same as from spiritual energy and usually they contain that spiritual energy or spirit energy as almost kind of like a battery that you can take around. In the novels I've seen, they're usually big enough to fit in your hand, although they vary in size. They're almost always broken up into degrees of maybe you could say strength or effectiveness. So you're going to have like low grade spirit stones, mid grade spirit stones, high grade spirit stones. Some novels have a whole bunch of different classifications going up into like supreme or like ultimate spirit stone. Oftentimes, after spirit stones, you'll get into something else, for example, immortal stones, or in the novel that I'm currently working on right now, Sage Monarch, there it goes beyond immortal to God and whatnot. And so sometimes the spirit stones are going to be found in the lower levels of the cultivation system of the novel with other things being used later on. Now, like I mentioned before, they store or they house energy usually. And a lot of times the immortal cultivators can take the energy from those stones and imbue it into themselves to use it to further their cultivation. Obviously, the low-grade spirit stones are going to have less energy, high-grade spirit stones are going to have more energy, and sometimes the higher-level versions or those immortal stones, god stones, or whatever other kind of stones they are, sometimes they're beyond the level of the low-level people to use. Now, one thing I want to point out about on a language level is that, oh right, I actually started down, started explaining this a minute or two ago and then I got sidetracked. So the two characters that make up the term spirit stone, the first one is spirit or spiritual, like I mentioned. Now the other one technically is the common word for stone, which is sure. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be translated as that. For example, um, that character will, will appear in things like words for jewels and diamonds. So I think that if you wanted to, you could very easily translate this as spirit jewels or spirit gems or something along those lines. And when you see them depicted in media, they almost always are like little gemstones or diamonds. So it, it's called, I call them spirit stones because way, way back in the day when I was first translating I Shall Seal the Heavens, you know, th these things came up in the very, very early chapters and I was, just saw the character for spirit, the character for stone. I was like, ah, oh, spirit stones, that's what they are. And I think I was one of the very early people to use that. There may have been other translators that also use the term as well. But it became popular and now it's, I think, kind of just a really common thing that everybody's used to. But if I could go back in time to my early self, when I first started translating I Shall Seal the Heavens, I may very well have suggested to translate it as something else, such as spirit gems or spirit jewels or something along those lines, because of the fact they actually look like jewels or gems, usually. Now, in a lot of the novels, these things are used as a form of currency. Whether it's buying things or trading, going to auctions, people will offer up sums of spirit stones to purchase other items. And I've seen a lot of people questioning this or complaining about it or criticizing it because of the fact that the spirit stones are consumable items. Like I mentioned, they're similar to batteries that contain spirit energy of some sort. And so if the cultivators want to, they can like set them up around them or maybe just hold it in their hand and absorb the energy from them. I mean, there's one famous scene from I Shall Seal the Heavens where uh, the main character is completely drained of power to the point where he can't do anything. And if I recall correctly, he cuts his hand and then sticks a, one of these spirit stones into his palm and then kind of absorbs the energy that way, if, if I'm remembering that scene correctly. 
Anyway, the point is people say, well, that doesn't make sense. How could you have a consumable item that stands as a currency? I do agree that sometimes it's kind of odd. The thing is that a lot of times the spirit stones are described as being like a very low level or almost useless form of energy cultivation. There's almost always better ways to get energy. So usually, and I'm not saying every single situation, but usually they're not the preferred method of practicing cultivation. That's one reason. The other thing is throughout history, there have been situations where there are consumable items, perishable items, maybe you could say used as currency, you know, whether that's maybe uh, salt in certain times of, in certain time periods or spices, or maybe cigarettes in prison. I feel like that's kind of a cliche or trope. And there's others, others throughout history that if you, you know, do a little bit of research, you can find. So it's not without precedent that something which could be consumed would be so valuable that it would be considered currency. Final thing to point out, not a big thing, but in terms of a color, I usually see them as being green or blue, but they can be all sorts of colors, you know, from purple to red to green, probably not black, but you never know. Hello, this is the death blade of the future. After I recorded the video, I remembered there was one other thing I wanted to say. So I'm just going to say it really quickly, and that is where do spirit stones come from? I'll never forget when I was doing I Shall Seal the Heavens. That was one of the very first uh, Xianxia novels. I think there were some of the other really popular ones like Coiling Dragon and whatnot, or really Xuan Huan. So I Shall Seal the Heavens is one of the first Xianxia novels and it had spirit stones from the very beginning. And early on, I remember so many comments of people saying, where do spirit stones come from? Well, in most of the novels, based on my understanding, they come from spirit stone mines, just like you would expect uh, jewels would be mined out of the ground, same with spirit stones, there are like quarries or mines where they cut them out and then refine them into the shape that they are used for cultivation purposes. So that's it. Incidentally, as I was preparing to just shoot this little extra video, as you can see on the screen here, I noticed that there is a place in um, China, and as you can see, these are the characters for spirit stone. This is Spirit Stone County in, uh, let's see here, in, in uh, Shanxi province. So, you know, for those of you who love cultivation novels, if you ever consider going to China, make sure to put Spirit Stone County on your destination list. And so those are my general thoughts and observations on Spirit Stones. Again, if you're a reader of these novels, what have you noticed that I missed? Is there anything I forgot to mention? Is there anything that I left out? Please feel free to leave your comments below. If you like this kind of content, do like and subscribe, share the video. You can support me on Patreon in the links below. And I do want to make one final disclaimer, which is I'm totally serious about how difficult it is to have a little toddler running around in the house uh, stuck here. And so I don't know how regularly I'm going to be able to continue updating. Hopefully every week like I have been, I'm going to make every effort to do so, but you never know how things will go. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Godzilla.